somebody asked me on the comments hey if we can get 240 uh, like motion clarity at 60 frames or even 30 why would you ever play at 100 or 120 frames um, and that's a great question because you have to consider this even if your computer is powerful enough to play at 100 or 120 frames if you play at 60 you can play at a higher resolution so even if you're playing at 4k you can upscale and use Nvidia deep learning super resolution and ray tracing and so if you can get the same motion clarity at 60 that you know just playing at 120 frames why would you sacrifice graphical fidelity and resolution why just to get a better input lag because of course you will get a better uh, responsiveness if you play at real 120 frames or even 100 and I got that question answered by fighting with the final boss of spider-man I'm not gonna spoil anything but I was trying to answer that question until the very end <laughs> Man, in the end, it came fast. This game was so amazing, I knew. I knew <laughs> it was not gonna last very long. But, fighting with that final boss, I was playing ray tracing, max out, 60 frames, using the Blur 10 Motion Pro Medium. So it looks like 240 in movement. And the majority of the game, what I was doing is just 100 frames using dynamic resolution scaling and DLSS together. I was playing at a rock solid 100 frames without ray tracing. And that was feeling fantastic. Just amazing. But then I discovered these motion clarity settings and I said, wait a minute. If I can get a better motion clarity and have ray tracing on, that's the way to go. So I was playing the game like that. Because if I test, so I tested the motion clarity, and it's difficult to notice the difference between, you know, because between 200 and 240 motion clarity, eh, it's very difficult to notice. But I see, I see that this option at 60 frames with D blur and 10 motion pro medium looks better in movement than 100 hertz, 100 frames per second with motion pro on high. So it looks better. The input lag, of course, is not as good, but the answer goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. Man, our eyes and our senses are so smart. It goes beyond our comprehension, okay? So you really need to feel it. You really need to be engaged and play in the game to notice the difference. And I was into it. And the difference for me was clear, clear. The 100 frames option was better. And it was better not only because it was feeling more responsive, because of course, at 100 frames, black, you know, black frame insertion, you can use game optimizer mode and get a better input lag. Because on game optimizer mode, you get the best input lag. But it was beyond that. It was much more than that. I feel... I was feeling <laughs> more information, if that even makes sense. Of course, more frames are being delivered in a real way. So it's a hundred real frames. Uh, the motion interpolation, what it's doing is basically creating frames that don't exist. So you have 60 frames and the TV is creating one frame in between. So it's interpolating uh, frames. Uh, but I think what's going on is basically when the complexity of the scene goes up and the GPU is not delivering all the frames perfectly in time and also when you have a specific situations on the screen that are difficult for the, for the motion interpolation algorithm to figure out those frames, then you feel it. You feel it. So it's not the same if I just do this and pan the camera, everything looks absolutely perfect because this is an easy a scenario for, for the algorithm. 
and all the frames are being delivered on time. But when you're actually playing the game, the thing, the game starts to be more complex, uh, you feel it. <laughs> you feel it. So, of course, the ideal is going to be 100 or 120 frames. If you can get that with Motion Pro on high and game optimizer mode, that is just perfection. The only problem is, of course, you're going to lose big brightness. You cannot get HDR technically because the highlights, they go down in 300 nits based on other people that know more and they measure that. I measure that myself with my cell phone and, and I'm getting that result too. Maximum brightness I get with Motion Pro on high is like 500 nits. So that sounds about right. So for HDR you need 600 minimum. But yeah, it's almost there. So with Motion Pro high you're killing the highlights but still you can get some HDR flare some HDR effect but aside from that 120 or even 100 frames with Motion Pro on high on this LG C1 is just perfection so good but the problem is that these games and this is an older game and it's performing flawlessly I mean this this Spider-Man game has been probably the smoothest experience I've ever had with this uh, with this TV. Really, truly amazing, spectacular game, of course. But these new games coming, they are targeting a higher graphical fidelity because for advertising purposes, these companies, they cannot show you 120 frames on YouTube, okay? So why would they create a game that looks amazing at such a high frame rate if they can instead target a lower frame rate and give you more graphical fidelity features like you know, ray tracing, you know, post-processing effects, um, and just make the game look better. So that's the reality. And I don't think that will, probably that will never change because... It's just the way it is. Most screens are, are still going to be 60 hertz. Uh, people, most people don't know because they've never seen it. They, they've never seen the difference between 60 and 120. And unfortunately, most games, in most games, we are not gonna be able to get such a high frame rate, even with very high-end uh, gaming PCs. So this motion interpolation and motion clarity settings they really got me thinking, why would I buy this new you know, RTX 4090? You can spend like $2,000 on that GPU. Why would I do that if I can instead get 60 frames in most upcoming games? I don't know, Black Myth Wukong. <laughs> I'm excited to play that game. It looks, it looks very fun and very creative. I'm excited. I'm sure I can get 60 frames on that game. No problem. Uh, so why would I buy that super you know, expensive GPU if the TV can basically make those 60 frames look like 240? Can you understand the kind of power difference? If you want to really get real 120 frames, the difference between that and 60 is just gigantic, not only on the GPU, but also on the CPU. So really this LG C1 is basically upgrading your gaming experience in such a huge way that you really have to see it to believe it. So if you have a gaming console and you have a game playing at 60 frames like this, Spider-Man, you can get 240 hertz, 240 frames motion clarity, okay? That's better than any than what any gaming PC can do right now. At, with that fidelity, with the fidelity you can get on your PS5, on this game, or you know, any other game that runs at 60, if you can get that motion clarity on the PS5, that is upgrading your gaming experience to a level that is beyond, beyond belief. 
and of course it is not real okay so it's not going to look or feel exactly the same as you know real 240 frames or even 120 with black frame insertion high but it's so close and it's so good that yeah you're gonna be good for a while so yeah that's the question i want to ask uh answer on this video does it even make sense to lower the graphical fidelity or to get a, you know, a, a more powerful GPU or, or gaming PC if the TV is gonna do magic with 60 frames? Uh, and the answer is not really. It doesn't make a lot of sense to spend a lot more to get more frames. So you can be happy already with what you have for a while to be honest and but yeah if all you care is to get the best results and money is not a consideration buy that 4090 <laughs> and get the new Ryzen CPU or Intel and you know get 120 frames on the upcoming games and get the real 120 but even then you have to consider that you're also going to have the option to get a higher resolution because at 120 frames, <laughs> you are not gonna you are gonna be able to instead of that get 60 with higher fidelity, with more graphics, with higher resolution. So if those 60 frames can look the same, why would you downgrade? And the reason would be because it feels better, it looks better when the action you know gets higher, <laughs> you will see it, you will see the difference but maybe some people are not going to notice that unless you are you know you're playing competitive for sure if you're playing a shooter competitive you want 120 frames motion pro high that's unbelievably good so good so yeah let me know if you have any questions uh if you don't know what i'm talking about i'm gonna post a link on the description basically explaining all the settings that i'm talking about here is basically this LG C1 can do magic. It doesn't matter if it's 30, 60 frames or 120 frames, the TV is able to give you 240 frames motion clarity. So what that means, what I'm talking about is if you have a 240 hertz sample and hold display, it can be this OLED TV, it can be an LCD monitor. So this TV is able to give you the same motion clarity that you would get if you are able to push <laughs> 240 frames rock solid in a display like that, which is not even possible. At 4K, you cannot. Um, very, very few games you're gonna be able to push 240 frames at 4K. So that's what I'm saying. Even if you get a more powerful GPU, you're still going to appreciate that higher resolution, higher graphical fidelity at 60 and just let the TV do magic. So yeah, in the future, definitely, I am going to consider uh, more, a lot more, the TV in the gaming experience equation for sure. We are always thinking about, or at least me, before, I, were, I was always thinking about, oh, the most powerful CPU and GPU and how many frames per second and all of that. And if you can get a TV that does a much better motion interpolation, black frame insertion, all those techniques with a lower input lag, I think that's going to be more important. I think, no, for sure, that's going to be more important for your gaming experience than getting a GPU that is 30% more powerful and paying like a thousand dollars more for that GPU uh, so yeah that's what I think after experimenting with this but yeah the TV is amazing uh, I didn't know when I got this TV I was about to return it because I didn't know all that you know was possible on this TV I just didn't know and nobody told me <laughs> I was so upset because I was not able to use black frame insertion, which was the reason why I got the TV. Why? Because it is not bright enough, just out of the box on SDR, it is not bright enough. 
the only way you can use it is basically if you have a good HDR game, you turn on dynamic tone mapping. But how many good HDR games do I have on my PC? I can count them with this hand, okay? It's not more than five. So I was so frustrated, so frustrated. Also the colors and the black level out of the box of this LG C1, it was just trash, trash. The colors, I, I've, sometimes I look back to those first videos that I made and I compare now with what I see and it's night and day difference. This TV out of the box, the colors, they were completely muted and I was crushing blacks so the black level was, uh, you know, the TV needs to warm up. You need to use it for a period of time and you definitely need to learn how to, you know, get the most out of it because LG is not, it's not telling us anything. But after learning, after realizing how many amazing features we have here, it is truly, truly uh, a game changer. I mean, it is amazing what this TV can do. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions.